are watching Darasa Online. Hello, welcome to Darasa Online. My name is Mr. Cleo Abubakar Davidson. Um, I am a geography teacher. Uh, and today we are going to start topographical map interpretation. Uh, subtopic understanding features on a map. And uh, we are going to focus on what, what we call the cross-section or the cross-profile. See <coughs> how to draw it. Uh, then after understanding on, on different procedure or steps on how to draw the cross-section or the cross-profile, then you will see how to calculate the vertical exaggeration as well as how to find the gradient between the, the two points on the map. <coughs> Lastly, we will check on how to find or to identify the intervisibility between two points on a map given. Okay, so let's see what is cross-section or what is cross-profile. Uh, cross-section will refer to the diagram drawn to represent the relief features on a map between two points. Listen to me very carefully. It's the diagram drawn to represent the relief features. We stick there between two points on a map. So what are the relief features? The relief features, it can be either the natural or the artificial features that cut across the two points on a given map. Okay? So <coughs> can you see, uh, for instance, we have an example here. As you can see, this is a diagram drawn to represent the relief features between two points on a map as they are given. I repeat, it, we refer to the diagram drawn to represent either natural or artificial features between the two points, point A and B. We have given two points right here and we have draw, I mean we have drawn the diagram according to the features that cut across the two points on a map. The diagram drawn we call it the cross section or the cross profile right there we have two type of cross section we have the simple cross profile as well as the annotated cross profile so what is the simple cross profile and what is annotated cross profile the simple cross profile will refer to the cross pro cross profile or the diagram that is drawn <coughs> with no title or shading like this that's why we call it, it is a simple cross profile or it is a simple diagram drawn, drawn to represent the physical features without labeling or indicating them. So as you can see, for instance, uh, uh, this is annotated because we have, we ha it has title and we have labeled, we have indicating the features, you see, between two points on the map. So if we remove this, the features, see, if we remove the features, then it means our, cro our cross profile right now, it changed from the annotated into the simple one. See? No title. No shading. See? It just show what? It shows the topograph. It show just shows the topograph as you can see. It just shows the, the topograph. That is the simple cross profile. It is a diagram because it indicates the configuration of the map area between the two points. As you can see, we have the steep slope right here. Uh, we have the swaddle, or we have the steep right there. We have the escapement or the upland area between the two points. So it is a simple because it got no title, no shading, you see, no labeling of the features between the two points. So let's see how to draw the cross profile between the two points. So right now we are going through the procedure on how to draw the cross profile or the <coughs> uh, yeah, relief uh, features between the two points on a map. Uh, right now we are going to see the procedure of drawing the cross profile or the cross section. So <coughs> let's assume we have given two points. Right now we are supposed or we are asked to draw the cross profile or the cross section between the two points on a map. So remember, the two points may be given by either a place name, maybe this is point A and this is point B, or the two points may be given by using the grid reference point. So as a Form 6 student, I know you know how to use either the place name to identify the position of, uh, of those area or uh, the grid reference point to identify the two points. So <coughs> let's see the first procedure. Identify the two points on a given map. It means the first procedure is to identify the two point asked because the question normally asks that uh, draw the cross section between point A and point B. The question asked this way. Question. Draw the cross profile between 
point A and point B. See? Draw the cross profile between point A and point B. It means we have point A and we have point B. So the point, I mean, the, 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 the key needs right here is how are you going to identify point A and point B on your map? Because first you have to identify the two points on a map. That's why the first procedure is identify the two points on a map. So you can identify them. You can identify them by using either the grid reference point or a place name. Let's see the diagram right here. You see? For instance, we have the diagram, this diagram right here. It means <coughs> you can see we have point A and point B. So let's say maybe the, the question asks me, draw the cross section between point A and point B. It means the first procedure is to identify the two points. Where are the two points? It means you have to find where is point A and where is point B. This is the first procedure. See, I write here. I mean, I have written here. You identify the two points on your map. You see? Refer the figure point A and point B. It means by using our figure right here, we have given the point A and point B. It means they use a place name. Point, this point here, its name is A. And this point here, its name is B. So that is the first procedure. We have already identified the two points. It means we go to the second step. The second step said, join the two points by using the straight line. Right now, I have already joined my two points by using the straight line. As you can see right here, this is point A, this is point B. I have joined the two points by using what? By using the straight line. The third stage, it means observe carefully the physical features and the contour line cut across uh, the, the, the line between the two points. See? Observe carefully the physical features and what? And the contour line that cast across the straight line joining the two points. It means we have to observe carefully. See? This is my straight line. It means which contour cut across my line, my straight line. It means we have this one. You see? Then you go, we have this one. This is the contour, 100 contour. Then we have this one, 80. We have this one, 60. Then we go, we find this one, another contour, which cut across my line, 60. You see, here we have 80. Here we have 100. Then you go there, we have 100. We have uh, also 80. We have 60. Um, then we have 40, etc. See? I have observed carefully. Then I found there are different contours, lines that cut across my my straight line. So if there are, is any features, for instance, railway, there is a road that cut or a river that cut across your line, it means you have to observe. And later you have to make sure you mark them into the edge of piece of paper. See, that is the fourth stage. As I, it's written right here. Observe carefully the physical feature and the contour line cut across the line between the two points. So after observing carefully, it means the last procedure, I mean, or the first procedure, you have to transfer the features into the edge of the piece of paper. Into the edge of piece of paper. You have to make sure you transfer them. You see the, the features that cut across the straight line between the two points, you have to transfer them into the edge of piece of paper. You see? Uh, then... So let's see an example on how are you going to transfer them. We have different contours. So how are you going to, 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 to mark them or to transfer them into the edge of piece of paper? Let's say this is our piece of paper. This one, it is a piece of paper. Then I have to make sure each contour that cut across the two lines, for instance, this is point A and this is point B, I have to make sure I transfer them into the edge of piece of paper. This, it is a piece of paper. Right here, this is the edge of the piece of paper. As you can see, my contour uh, written right here, 20. Then I will mark right here, 20. See? This one. Then this, the second contour, it marks 20. Then I will mark into the edge of piece of, of paper. How much? 40. Then we go 60. We go 80. 100. 120. So, as the contours marked the on the, I mean, between, as uh, the contour cut across my line, then I will mark them into the edge of piece of paper. As you can see right here, this is the edge of piece of paper. I have marked my two, I mean, the straight line between the two points. Then I have marked what? The contours cut across the line. Thereafter, after making sure you have transferred them, uh, the contour from what? 
from from the from the from the, I mean on your map between the two point into the edge of piece of paper. Thereafter, you have to follow another step, which is finding the vertical the vertical the vertical scale according to the contour line and draw the vertical line of the lines. It means you have to observe carefully your contours. You have to observe carefully your contours. You see, you have. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. It means you have to find the vertical scale according to the contour interval that you have. You see? So I can say maybe, how am I going to find the vertical scale? It means on finding the vertical scale, you have to be very careful. You have to look careful on the contours interval that cut across that line. For instance, in my diagram here, I have 20, 40, 60, 80. So how am I going to find my vertical scale? It means, I may say, either, let's say, one centimeter, I will use one centimeter to represent a 20 meter. You see? This will be my what? My vertical scale. Or someone may use maybe one centimeter represent 40 meter. This is my vertical scale, see? So you may change it in and put it into ratio. You can say one centimeter right here, represent 20 meters. So you can change one centimeter represent 20, which will be equal to this one. What? Centimeter. Then I will divide one centimeter by one centimeter. One ratio, this one. This will be my vertical scale, see? Or for instance, if you may use this one, one centimeter is equal to 40 meter. It means you may change it into centimeter. This one, one centimeter, is equal to 40 meter, which is equal to this one centimeter. You divide by one centimeter by one centimeter, you get one ratio. How much? Ratio 4,000. This will be my vertical scale. So it depends. Someone may choose one centimeter represent 20 meter. That's according to him or her. Another one may, may choose one centimeter is equal to this one. That's according to him or her. See, so, I mean, uh, different people they may use different vertical scale of I mean on the same question. After finding the vertical scale, it means right now you will draw your line. It means, let's let assume this is point A and this is point B. Let's assume this is point A and this is point B. So what are you going to do right now? What are you going to do is, what are you going to do is, after finding the vertical scale, it means we have to draw the vertical line at the end of the two points. See? Remember, my point is A and my point is B. So at the end, you have to draw the vertical line. This is the vertical line at the end of the two points. Thereafter, I'll work on my vertical scale that I got from, I mean, uh, with respect or in relation to the contour intervals that I have. Then from there, I'll make sure maybe, uh, so let's say uh, I'll take the, the edge of the piece of paper. Then this is the edge of the piece of paper. And I have marked the, all of my contour lines that have cut across this line. You see, 80, 100. Then 80, then 60, then 40, then 20. See? Then from there, I have chosen my scale. I have already chosen my vertical scale. See? Let's say I have used one centimeter. It means the point from this point to this point is one centimeter. I repeat, this point to this point, it is one centimeter. So remember, I said either one may say one centimeter is equal to 20 meter. Or oh, another one may use one centimeter is equal to 40, 40 meter. So it depends, see, and it, it may differ according to the, I mean, the, the way people or students choose his or her what? A contour interval, I mean, the vertical scale depending on the contour interval. So you can see one may use one centimeter represent 20 meter. Or the other one may use one centimeter represent 40 meter. So let's say we use one centimeter represent 20 meter. You see? Let's say we use our vertical scale one centimeter representing 20 meters. Then from there, it means I will use 20. After one centimeter, 20, it means 40. After one centimeter, 20, it means 60. After one centimeter, 20, see? 100, 
So you mark it as the same as to both sides. 20, this will be 60, 80, 100, 120. See? The other one may decide maybe <coughs> I draw one centimeter is equal to 40 meter. It will be the same. See? It will be the same. So after drawing, <coughs> after drawing your, after drawing the, 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 the two line at the end, after drawing the two line at the end of what? Of the, of the, of the, of the two points between your line, it means you have to make sure you join the two points according to the contour interval that cut across the line, you see? So you have to make sure, okay, this is 20, it means this is 20. This is 40, then you go there, this is 40. This is 60, then you mark where there is 60, see? This is one is 80, you go there, this is 80, see? This is 80, there. 100, this is 100. Then from there, 80, you go use this one. 100, it is there. Then 80, is there 60, 40, 20 there. So you connect the dotted lines that you have been drawing. See? And lastly, you'll find something like this. It means we have the diagram there we drawn. So the diagram obtained between the two points, I repeat, the diagram, the diagram drawn between the two points is what we call the cross-section. So as you can see the procedure there, it means after, find, after, transfer, after transferring the, future, the features into the edge of the piece of paper, then I have to find the vertical scale according to the contour lines. See, I have given the contour lines. The contour lines, I have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. It means I have choose that let this be my what? My vertical scale. So it means this is 1 centimeter, 20 meter, 1 centimeter, 20 meter, 1 centimeter, 20 meter. So you write it the same in both sides at the end of these two points. Then from there, <coughs> you can shade. You see, because we are asked to uh, draw the vertical line already. Shade the diagram, write the title indicating features. Where lastly, you can indicate both vertical scale and the map scale provided. It means from here, you can shade your, your diagram. See? So, if there is any feature that cut across the line, you may label them or indicating them. So, for instance, maybe if there are walls, you see, maybe a river cut across this point, you may indicating there is a river and label it. So, according to our question, we don't have the river, the railway, or any road cut across the, the line. We just have the what? The contour lines cut across the line. So, you leave as it is, then after shading, it means you have to write the title. Our title is what? Because the question asks that draw the cross section between point A and point B. That is our question. Then the title will be the cross section, cross section, no, no, between, sorry, the cross section between point, e, point A and, e, and B. This will be your title. Uh, thereafter, the the the, the tallest, uh, the last, you can you can you can indicate both vertical scale and the map scale. It means you may write our uh, vertical scale. This vertical scale is equal to one centimeter, represent twenty meter, and you may write also the map scale given. The map scale is always given. I mean, from your map, it's always so it can be anyway. Either this one. Or the given map scale, you can write it down. So this is how to draw the simple cross profile, or the simple, I mean, how to draw the either the annotated or the simple cross profile. See, this is a common procedure on how to draw the cross section. Thereafter, you may be asked to find what you call the vertical exaggeration. So listen to me very careful. What is vertical exaggeration? 
or sometimes you may be asked to find what you call the gradient. So you have to be very careful on, on finding the gradient because it's related to our cross-section. Remember, gradient will refer to uh, the steepness or the gentleness of the slope in your diagram, okay? How steepness or gentleness is the slope is between the two points on the map. Thereafter, you may be asked to find what we call the intervisibility between the two points. The intervisibility between the two points, it means we are talking about do these two points, A and B, can be seen, each from, can be seen from one another? That is what we call the intervisibility, see? So according to our diagram, there is no intervisibility between the two points because once you want to join the two points, you see, this point, let's assume this is point A and this is point B, you cannot, they cannot see from each other. Let's assume, let's assume someone is standing right here. You see? They cannot see someone who is standing right here. So, if one person is standing in this point and one person is standing in this, in this point, it means the two persons, they cannot see each other. So, the, the two points are not intervisible. But let us show maybe, uh, maybe this diagram went to this direction. You see, if someone was standing in this point and someone was standing in this point, it means that the two points can be seen from each other. And we say that the two points are intervisible. But according to our question right here, uh, the two points are intervisible. Why? Because the two points cannot be seen from, from one another or from each other. Let's see how to find the vertical exaggeration uh, between the two points uh, on the map. So, what is vertical exaggeration by definition? Vertical exaggeration refer to the number of times by which the vertical scale is larger than the horizontal scale. Number of times by which the vertical scale is larger than the horizontal scale. It means right now we want to know or to identify or to determine how many times vertical scale is larger than the horizontal scale, you see? Or in other way we can say we want to determine or to identify how many times horizontal scale is smaller than the vertical scale. So remember, horizontal scale we refer to the map scale, while the vertical scale, it is a scale that you have obtained after assuming, you see, assuming the contour interval according to the scale you wanted. So for instance, I said, according to our, according to, 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 to our diagram right here, we have assumed that this is our vertical scale, that I assumed that this point from this point is one centimeter. So my one centimeter will represent 20 what? 20 meter. It means this is my vertical scale. Then our horizontal scale is what we call the map scale provided. Normally uh, indicated or shown on your map sheet. See? So let's assume this is our what? This is our map scale. So if we want to find the vertical scale, it means you have to, I mean, if you want to find the vertical exaggeration, you have to take the vertical scale that you have created, that you have assumed, divided by the map scale or the horizontal scale given. So let's go there to see how to find the vertical exaggeration. According to our example, I said, according to our example, it means uh, vertical scale, vertical scale is equal to, vertical, sorry, vertical exaggeration is equal to the vertical scale, which is equal to one ratio 2000, you see? divided by the horizontal scale. I said the horizontal scale will refer to the map scale provided. And the map scale provided is one ratio 50,000. You see, so here will be, right, one ratio 50,000. That is our map scale or the horizontal scale. So right now we have to take this one divided by this one, you see? So if you take this one divided by this one, you'll get is equal to how much? It means you will take uh, 50, divide by 25 times. It means vertical exaggeration is equal to 25 times, see? Then we say, or we conclude, I think this one divided by this one is similar or is equal to take this one, the denominator of horizontal scale, which is this one, divided by the denominator of what? Of the vertical scale, which is equal to this one. So if you take 50,000, divide by 2,000, you will get 25. So, because we said uh, vertical exaggeration refers to the number of times by which the vertical scale is larger than the horizontal scale, then right now we write vertical uh, exaggeration is equal to 25 times. It means uh, the vertical scale is larger than the, the, than the horizontal scale 25 times. Or in opposite of it, we can say the horizontal scale is smaller than the vertical scale 25 times. That's why vertical exaggeration is equal to 25 times. Remember, 
<coughs> uh, in a standard uh, point of view, normally the vertical scale cannot exceed 10. So you have to make sure uh, when you are choosing your vertical scale between the uh, according to a uh, uh, contour interval, make sure your vertical scale does not exceed 10. It means right here, what I mean is that uh, 1 is less or equal to vertical exaggeration, and vertical exaggeration is less than, than what? Than 10. This should be your standard. So that to avoid a, this, I mean, the, the cross section not to be too large or not to be too low. I mean, too small. See? So sometimes you can draw, if you, if you, if you assume if you, if you go wrong or you assume maybe you are, your vertical scale too large, it means that then you will draw the, the vertical, uh, I mean the, the cross section too small. And if you avoid, I mean you, you, you draw, I mean you assume your vertical scale too small, it means that then you are going to draw your cross section too large. So in that point, you have to make sure that you have to find the vertical exaggeration before drawing what? your cross-section. As advanced student, I insist that before drawing your cross-section, make sure you find the vertical exaggeration by assuming that let me use this vertical scale, then you relate with the given map scale to see the cross-section, I mean the vertical exaggeration that you have obtained. It make sure your vertical exaggeration is between 1 and 10, you see. Because right now we have we have calculated our vertical scale according to our diagram, I mean, uh, according to our uh, cross-section, and we have found it as 25 times, which is too much big, you see? And this is how, so, I mean, by summarizing, uh, let's, uh, by summarizing, uh, let's assume we are not talking about the, the cross-section, we are talking about the vertical exaggeration. How to find the vertical exaggeration? We find the vertical exaggeration by doing what? By taking the vertical scale divided by, by the horizontal scale, or we take the denominator of horizontal scale divided by the denominator of vertical scale. This is my vertical scale. It means this is the denominator of what? Of the vertical scale. This is my horizontal scale. It means this one. 50,000. Um, 50, this 50,000 is my what? Is in my denominator of the, of the vertical scale. So sometimes we may take a denominator of horizontal scale divided by the denominator of vertical scale. <laughs>
which is equivalent or is equal to the horizontal scale, and we have the vertical scale from there, we can find the vertical exaggeration. It means the vertical exaggeration is equal to the vertical scale, which is equal to 1 ratio 10,000 divided by the horizontal scale, which is equivalent to the map scale provided, which is equal to 1 ratio 50,000. So it is equal to 50,000 divided by 10,000 which is equal to five times. It means the vertical exaggeration right now, vertical exaggeration is equal to five times. Therefore, vertical exaggeration is equal to five times. What does it mean? It means that the vertical scale is larger than the horizontal five times. Or the horizontal scale is smaller than the vertical scale by how many times? By five times. Okay, let's see another question so that we can... Okay, so uh, we have seen how to calculate the vertical exaggeration. And right now, let's see how to find the gradient or to calculate the gradient between the two point on a given cross section or cross profile. <coughs> okay, remember, what is gradient? Gradient refers to the steepness or gentleness of the slope between the two points on a map. You see, we have asked it to draw the cross section between the two points on a map. The, this is point A and this is point B. So, what is the gradient? We refer to the steepness or the gentleness of the slope between the two points on the on, on what on a map. So, so, how are we going to find the gradient between the two points? It means gradient. We refer to the uh, how are we going to find the gradient? It means gradient is equal to the vertical increase divided by the horizontal equivalent. Listen to me very careful. Gradient will refer to the vertical increase divided by the horizontal equivalent. So what is vertical increase and what is horizontal equivalent? You see, vertical increase uh, refers to the difference between the highest contour and the lowest contour between the two points. You see, it means we have the contour which cut across the line between the two points. You see, remember, uh, in drawing cross-section, you are asked to draw the cross-section between the two points on a map. See, uh, after identifying the two points on a map, it means you have to join the two points by using a straight line. Thereafter, you have to observe and mark all the contour lines that cut across that line. You see, so uh, we have different contours that cut across that line. Thereafter, the contour lines that cut across that line, you have to, to observe to look careful which one it is the smallest contour and which one it is the highest contour, you see. Therefore, in order to find the vertical increase, because uh, in order to find the gradient, we must find what we call the vertical increase. And uh, we have told you right here, vertical increase refers to the difference between the highest contour and the lowest contour that cut across that line, you see. So let us refer to our diagram right here uh, so that I can show what is vertical increase, you see. Uh, the lowest contour right here it is 20 and the highest contour as you can see is 120. So it means uh, what is a uh, vertical increase? Vertical increase uh, refers to the difference between the highest contour that cut across the two points between the straight line which is this is point B and this one is point A. The lowest contour is 20 and the highest contour is 120. It means the vertical increase we take the highest contour which is 120 minus the lowest contour which is 20. Are we together? Then from there, from there, we'll find what is vertical, vertical equivalent. It means vertical equivalent uh, refers to the exact distance between the two points on the map. Exact distance between the two points on a map. It means right now we have to take the ruler. You see, you can take a ruler and then you can measure the length of the straight line between the two points on the map. You see? So listen to me very careful. Uh, right now, the vertical increase, we will get it in a meter which is on the actual ground, while the distance or between the two points on a map can be in centimeter because it is easy a distance between the two points on a map. Right there, are we together? Horizontal equivalent, equivalent, equivalent to refer to the exact distance between the two points on a map. It means the distance that we will get after measuring the two points on a map will be uh, in centimeter and it is a distance on a map. While the horizontal, I mean the vertical increase will be the distance on the actual ground. So let's go how to find the gradient in a simple way. The gradient it means, how are we going to find the gradient? Uh, how are we going to find the gradient between the two points? It's very simple. It's very simple. Gradient, gradient 
is equal to the vertical increase. You take the highest contour minus lowest contour, which is 120 meter minus 20 meter, divided by the horizontal equivalent exact distance between the two points on the map. So if you take your ruler and uh, let's say you measure the two, the distance between the two points, it means this is point A and this is point B. You can take your ruler and you can measure the two, the distance between the two points. So let's say the distance between the two points is 10 centimeters, okay? The distance between the two points, let us assume the distance between, between these two points is 10 centimeters. Then we go there. It means the horizontal equivalent is equal to 10 what? 10 centimeter. So how are we going to calculate the gradient in this point? We will have to take our 120 meter minus 20 meter which is equal to 100 meter divided by 10 centimeter. Then how are we going to calculate the gradient right here? Make sure or oh, you have to note that uh, the difference right here are in actual ground. Actual ground. And right now they are in meter. And the distance right here is, is on a map. It is on a map. So you cannot make any calculation if the two uh, measurements, they differ in terms of where they are. You have to make sure they are on the same side. Either they are all on the actual ground or they are all on what? On a map. So we have to use the map scale is that to take this one, this distance which is on a map into the actual ground. Or you have to take the map scale to change this distance right here, which is you know, on the actual, actual ground into the map unit or map measurement. So we have our map scale. This is our map scale right here. 1 ratio 50,000. This is our map scale, which says that this one, it says 1 centimeter on a map represents half kilometer ground on the ground, you see? One centimeter on the map, is, it represents half kilometer on the ground. So you have to change this one centimeter, which is on the map, into what? Into the actual measurement units. It means, I will say, one centimeter is equal to half kilometer. Then how about this one centimeter, which is on a map? Which 10 centimeter, which is on a map, will give me how many kilometers, you see? Thereafter, we'll change into meter by using what? The normal mathematical calculation. It means from here, we will get x uh, is equal to how much? Is equal to five what? Five kilometer. So five kilometer is equivalent to five thousand what? Five thousand meter. So have you seen that right now that okay, this ten centimeter which is on a map right now is equivalent or is equal to five thousand meter. Then from there you can be able to calculate your gradient. It means the gradient from here will be equal to this one, one hundred meter which is on the actual ground, divide by, see, this one. But this one is on the map. Right now we have changed this one uh, measurement, which is on the map, into what? Into the actual ground. And we have got uh, this one. I mean 5,000, what? 5,000 uh, meter. Then you write 5,000 meter. Then from there, this is on the actual ground, and this one is on the actual ground. Are we together? Then from there, you can be able to what? To do the normal mathematical calculation. It means this meter and this meter will be away. Then you will cancel this one and this one. Then our gradient will be equal to 1 over 50. You see? That will be our what? Our gradient. Then the gradient which means at every one fifty, at every one feet, it means there is a slope of 50 meter downward. It either increase or decrease by how much? By 50 meter. At every one feet, it means there is decreasing or increasing of 50 meter or yeah, 50 meters ahead. This is our gradient. Then from there, you can be able to find what we call the slope. <coughs> Remember slope, 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 slope is equal to the tan inverse tan inverse of gradient and remember we have gradient it means to find the slope is equal to tan inverse of gradient which is equal to 1 ratio 50
Okay, uh, we have another question. Uh, it says the actual distance between the two point uh, on a map with a scale one ratio of 50,000 is four centimeter. So listen to me, listen to me very careful. The actual the actual distance between two points on a map with the actual distance between two points on a map on a map uh, with this uh, scale is four centimeter. So we have the distance on a map which is four centimeter and we have the map scale right there which is one ratio of 50,000. Then they said uh, point A is at 400 meter and point B is at 800 meter. It means the altitude of point A, point A is at this um, altitude or height and point B is at this altitude or height. Uh, how can you determine the steepness or gentleness of the given two point? How are we going to determine or to calculate the gentleness or the steepness between the two points? It means right now the question needs us to explain or to calculate what called the gradient. See, because gradient or slope is what called the steepness or the gentleness between the two points. So we go back. I mean, we write down, down the, the data or the given solution. It means the givens are the givens. It means we have the map scale. Map scale is equal to one ratio fifty thousand. I'm sure uh, we are together from there. Then we have the actual distance on a map. It means we have the what we call the horizontal equivalent. Horizontal equivalent. Because if you, 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 you try to see what is horizontal equivalent, we refer to the actual distance between the two points on a map. The actual distance between the two points on a map. Where right now we have it is four centimeter. Then from there, uh, we were asked or we were told that uh, point A is at this altitude and point B is at this altitude. You see, point A is at 400 meter altitude and point B is at uh, 800 meter is altitude. It means uh, by using this 400 and 800 meter, we can be able to find what we call the vertical increase. It means vertical increase will take 800 meter minus 400 meters. You see, so we have what we call the vertical increase. Vertical increase. Vertical increase, we take the highest con uh, contour minus the lowest contour. It means we take the 800 meter minus 400 what? meter. So from there, we can be able to find what we call the gradient. Because how are we going to determine what to calculate the steepness or the gentleness between the two points? It means right now, they need us to calculate what? The gradient. Grad gradient is required. See? Then from there, we know what is gradient. I mean, the formula for calculating the gradient, that the gradient is equal to the vertical increase divided by the horizontal equivalent. Horizontal, horizontal what? Equivalent divided by the horizontal equivalent. So from there, vertical increase is how much? It means we take highest contour minus the lowest contour which is equal to uh, 400 meter this one 400 meter uh, horizontal equivalent uh, we have here the horizontal equivalent is four centimeters the actual distance between the two point on the map which is four centimeter then from there <coughs> from there remember i told you that uh, this one the vertical increase this one is on the actual ground while the uh, four centimeter given is on a map, so we cannot make calculation uh, when they are not on the same side. See, so we have to make sure the two uh, given measurements they are on the same side. It means they are either on the map or they are either on the actual ground. So we have to change one of them to be, I yeah, mean, to, to, to go into the other side. So we may change, for instance, this one four centimeter which is on the map to go into what into the actual ground by by using what by using the map scale provided so by referring the map scale provided it means this is our map scale what does it say it say one centimeter on the map is equal to a half kilometer on the actual ground so we ask ourselves how about this one you see how about this one so we put here how about four centimeter is equal to how many kilometer you see, then from there you get x c is equal to two kilometer. 
This is two kilometer because right here we are in meter. It means this is two kilometers is equal to 2,000 what? 2,000 meter. Then we will substitute there. Instead of writing four centimeter, which is on the map right now, we can use or we have converted four centimeter, which is on the map into into the actual ground units, which right now we have what? We have 2,000 what? 2,000 meter. Then from there, I can write 400 meter divided by this one which is our horizontal equivalent. But now we have changed it from four centimeter, uh, which is on the map into the actual ground units or measurement, which right now it, uh, it is 200 meter, 2,000 2, meter. Right now it is 2,000 meter. So we will get is equal to one ratio, one over five. Because if we take this one, if we cancel this one, then it's four by one, four by five, okay? Then we find our, our our gradient is one by five. Then gradient is equal to one over five. It means at every one at every one feet there is decrease or increase of the slope by by five. By summarizing, uh, right now we have seen how to calculate the vertical exaggeration as a gradient, how to draw, I mean, how to use different procedure to draw the cross profile with the cross section. So let's see, uh, the, to, let, let us see the importance, okay, of cross section uh, to our real life. So it means we connect the, uh, the importance of drawing the cross profile with the real situation in our day life, okay. Uh, <coughs> Cross-section helps to determine the height of the landscape on a map. As we have seen before, that uh, through cross-section we can be able to find the, or to determine the steepness of the land between the two points on a map. So if you can be able to determine the steepness or the slope of land between the two points, it means you can be able to de determine the height, see, of that land. Then from there, it helps to, in, in, in planning the construction structure based on the geological pattern, see. For instance, if we want to, 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 to construct the bridge, you see, across a, a between the two points on a certain land, it means you have to make sure you know the geological pattern of that land between the two points, you see. Uh, thereafter, um, features like anticline, cyclone, faults can be seen on the cross-section. That's a good import, I mean, that's one among the, the importance of uh, drawing the cross-section. But it shows features between the two points so features like a river, railway, road, saddle, coal, you see, um, etc., etc. This is we call the natural features. It means through cross-section, once you draw the cross-section between the two points, you can be able to determine either natural or artificial features like this one, as I've mentioned. You see, then it helps to determine the nature of the slope or gradient between the two points on the map. You see, as we have seen um, earlier, how to draw I mean, to draw the cross-section and at the same time, how are you going to find or to determine or to calculate the slope or the gradient between the two points? Through cross-section, you can be able to determine the nature of the slope or gradient between the what? Between the two points on your map. Thank you very much. <coughs> you are welcome once again uh, uh, on, the, on the next period. And I'm going to leave you with this question right here um, as a quiz that it gives the clear procedures on how to draw the cross-section between the two points on the map. So right now you're supposed to know the procedure on how to draw the cross-section, let's say between point A and point B on a given map. So you can use it as um, exercise. You can take any map, you know, and they, you can try to find the two point and try to draw the cross-section between the two point that you may choose according to your map. You are most welcome and have a nice day until the next session. Thank you very much. <laughs>